announces major cuts. And despite the governor's call for another special session, it was shot down by lawmakers. Plus, a major drug case involving allegations of government corruption gets underway in federal court. Hafei and good evening. Well, accused of a furlough fakeout, the Cavill administration maintains there's no faking anything. And today, up the ante as acting Fire Chief Joey Sinicholas led a press conference at Adeloupe to announce effective Sunday, his agency will implement a series of austerity measures that will impact their ability to provide critical services to the public. Here's what's being cut in 48 hours. The PD and Estumbo fire stations will close. GFD will combine two advanced life support units. The Dededo fire truck and rescue one unit will merge. The rescue fire truck and rescue unit will reduce from four to three. And the Fire Code Enforcement Bureau will see a reduction in their schedule. And the news team's Nestor Laconto was at Adeloupe as the fire chief implored lawmakers to act immediately. We are now facing a situation that has given me no choice but to degrade our ability to meet our mission mandates, which could ultimately result in the loss of life or, at the very least, lessen our community's confidence that life-saving measures are available. This because Chief Sinicola says he needs to slash $200,000 in monthly overtime to meet the governor's order for a 10% cut in line agency budgets. Calvo has been pushing for a tax hike to make up for a $67 million revenue shortfall due to federal tax reforms. Sinicola says it's a question of cash management that needs to be addressed now and not later. So these measures, as extreme as they are and, and as immediate that they have to happen, is intended to save us from shutting down all stations towards the end of this fiscal year. But it will have an immediate and significant impact on GFD's response capabilities by altering the carefully considered equation of population size, time and distance. San Nicolas says all agencies are subject to the same budget cuts and even an essential one such as the fire department cannot be spared. And he refutes speculation that GFD is being singled out to send a message to the legislature. It's a life-saving service and uh, I'm doing everything in my power because otherwise I will not be able to sleep good at night. And none of you should be able to sleep good at night knowing that we're going to shut down a fire station. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a show. I will shut down those stations as directed. The deadline, 8 o'clock Sunday morning. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Whether it's a show or not, the mayor of the largest village in Guam is hoping the drama will end because lives could be on the line. Carmen Terlahi reports. I'm just saying, pleading, pleading with the governor, the chief, the legislature, please uh, do, we'll do anything. Close your admin offices and keep the, stations op the station open. Dededo Mayor Melissa Savaris is disappointed in government leaders who she says don't realize closing a Stumbo fire station will deeply impact over 10,000 village residents. And if there's a fire or a medical emergency, first responders won't make it on time. The area that the Stumbo fire station covers, it covers an area where some are Chamorro land trust properties and those homes in some of those areas are only wood and tin structure. So should there be a spark or any type of fire incidents, um, those homes will go up and engulf, be engulfed in flames in seconds. Since we have over 12,000 people that live in this area that the, that the Istanbul Fire Station covers. So, of course, a response time for a medical emergency as well, someone having a heart attack, you know, anything within the seven minutes is critical. She worries for the senior citizens who live just next door. They feel safe now, but now with the station, you know, the threat of the station being closed, who will take care of them? Her suggestion, close the admin offices, not the fire stations. They can use the stations as, as their admin office so that they can turn, stop, don't pay those rents, you know, cut your lease and with that, save the money there with, with your rental space and your utilities and bring the people out to the station because the stations are the ones that need to get, stay open. Emphasizing service to the people and public safety should be top priority. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlahi.
Deputy Mayor Jesse Alleg shares the Dededo Mayor's concerns, saying he isn't happy with the decision and the health and safety of his village is paramount. The press conference at Adeloupe was held an hour and a half after Senators returned a special session for 39 seconds and recessed until next Tuesday. No reason was given. But soon after the recess, Governor DeCalvo revoked that special session and called them back in for another one for 1 o'clock this afternoon, this time to discuss a new bill he sent down. The latest version called for another 2% increase to the business privilege tax but sets a sunset provision of March 31st, 2019. The new bill also includes all amendments that were approved in his first Bill 245. The bill, however, failed to get enough votes to pass. So what happened at 1 o'clock this afternoon? Nothing. Only two senators reportedly showed up. That's because based on advice from the legislature's legal counsel, it doesn't appear the governor has the legal authority to revoke his initial call to special session and call for another one when they've already convened in the initial session he called, which they are currently in recess. Although that may sound confusing, Acting Speaker Therese Shalahi says what's clear is both sides have to work together. I'm very much hoping that uh, the, between the fire chief and the governor, since the fire chief says he's acting at, at somebody's direction, then they will find another way, that they will not take ambulances offline and um, I know all the agencies are going to have to find ways to cut costs, but I just hope that it could be without cutting um, public safety. The administration, meanwhile, maintains the governor has the Organic Act authority to call them into another special session. The governor is stating that while senators have recessed for the three-day third, the three -day weekend, rather, thousands of government employees face uncertainty and others face unemployment. He adds Speaker B.J. Cruz left island earlier this week for Bangkok and Senator Mike Sinicholas has been absent from session all week. Meanwhile, it's not just the legislature and Adeloupe going at it. Senator Will Castro is calling his colleagues out. He's written a letter to the acting speaker for failing to acknowledge his objection to going into recess during the 10 a.m. special session. He also believes that there wasn't a quorum for a session to resume and therefore entertain any motions at all. As the administration and the legislature continue to grapple over how to raise more revenue to meet the projected shortfall, a former senator is proposing another idea. Businessman Simon Sanchez says leaders may want to consider a tax passed in Hawaii, known as a visible gross receipt tax. Every business on Guam knows how to do GRT. We'd all have to learn how to do a sales tax, and that lag would create pressure on when revenues could begin to be realized. Meanwhile, a visible GRT you could implement pretty quickly, very straightforward, and technology today allows vendors to easily add that one component onto the receipt when they punch it in that would be easier to work with and faster to work with and protect the bond covenants and eliminate uncertainty. Sanchez says the remaining debate would be over how much to increase the visible GRT. He also says that a foundation will be set for a sales tax if the government decides it wants to move away from the current Hidden GRT. Still on the topic of the fiscal crisis, KUAM has obtained a copy of the governor's amended executive order propo regarding proposed government furloughs. He originally ordered the furloughs to start next Tuesday, but was advised by the attorney general that such actions would be invalid unless they followed established rules and regulations. The new order states that the furloughs will proceed pursuant to DOA's rules and regs. The governor called a cabinet meeting Friday so agency heads could be briefed by DOA on the procedures for employee work hour cutbacks. Director Edward Byrne and Deputy Director Vincent Ariola say they want to prepare for the potential cash crisis. So what we're trying to do is get ahead of this and make sure that the government is well positioned to deal with this shortage. And, and that means dealing with people's pay. We have to give due notice to the parties. We have to streamline uh, all areas within uh, our, our departments. Uh, we have to look at non-essential services that may, in fact, be cut. Uh, so there's a whole lengthy process that we have to go through, and, it, and it, uh, the whole time period takes, uh, takes about 90 days. Until then, they will need to carefully manage the cash. Ariola says the established priority is legal obligations such as bond payments and payroll, followed by agency allotments and vendor payables. The DOA, DOA officials say the fiscal crisis is real, and so are the possibilities for furloughs. 
from the cash planning point of view, it's not a scare tactic. We've been pretty clear in telling the legislature that there's a tax revenue shortfall. There's no bluffs going on. Uh, we realize what's on the table. It's just the manner of, of fixing this, this issue. That's, that, that seems to be the, the crux of the problem. Additionally, the governor's new executive order also states that any furloughs would apply across the board to all department and agencies, including autonomous and semi-autonomous agencies. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM news than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. I'm in the club. Half a day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half a day, I'm in the club. Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. Jet skis, the thing, the stuff, and the pie. Each term said to describe the code used by a pair facing federal drug charges whenever they allegedly plan to smuggle eight pounds of meth from California to Guam. Yeah, the prosecution arguing they were caught red-handed, but the defense calling it entrapment and corruption on part of the law enforcement. Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser were in court today after a lengthy seven days of jury selection, both sides presenting opening statements to the 18-member jury. Indicted for conspiracy to distribute and possession with the intent to distribute the drug ICE sitting beside their attorneys, Raymond Martinez and Juanita Moser watched as the government was first to address the jury. The couple are accused of trying to bring about eight pounds of meth from Southern California to Guam in 2015. The drugs hidden inside five-gallon containers marked with Morton Salt labels. They were eventually stopped in the Golden State as authorities monitored their alleged drug activity. Federal Prosecutor Fred Black taking the jurors down memory lane, telling them the case goes as far back as 2009, he painted a culture of corruption within Guam Customs and Quarantine that ultimately facilitated the local drug trade and described how defendants devised a plan to get meth into Guam. This is when Black says the bad deals occurred between those accused and Customs Lieutenant Henry Avendia. Avendia is one of the government's witnesses. A prior instance he contends is the pair in 2011 would bring cars to the island and flip them for profit. Now, Avendia should sound familiar. He was one of several customs officers who were indicted in 2015 for receiving kickbacks from private businesses for favors. He eventually entered into a plea agreement and agreed to cooperate with the Fed's investigation. But Black argued the couple wanted to get rich quicker by bringing drugs here instead. He says in late 2012, they approached Alvin Dia to help. However, he was afraid to get involved with drugs, specifically with meth. Fast forward to 2015, two years after an apparent fallout between Alvin Dia and the couple. The Fed's employing Alvin Dia to go undercover and carry out a scheme to catch them in the act. Black brought up several recordings of conversations between the trio as they planned out how to get the drugs to Guam. He called Moser the leader of it all. The recordings, he says, detailed how they used code referring to the drugs as the pie or the stuff. He told the jury the couple are not junkies 
They are greedy. He concluded that after being caught with the drugs in their rental car in California, that the evidence will show they did exactly what they were being charged with. The argument changed, however, when attorney Peter Perez, who represents Martinez, told jurors Alvin Dia and the other law enforcement investigators from Guam and California are not credible. He contends the case is based on a corrupt investigation. Perez saying the scheme to catch his client, quote, was all government orchestrated and it was all government directed. He argues that investigators put a GPS device in the couple's rental car without first getting a warrant and that none of them ever reported the device even after a canine inspection alerted them to it during a traffic stop. Perez alluding to entrapment and that they were set up. He asked that his client be found not guilty, an argument that will ultimately be up to the jury to decide. Attorney David Lujan, defense for Moser, will begin his opening statements Monday morning. They allegedly kidnapped a teen boy and made threats to kill him. Blarman Replotli Jr. to a Malayan and Damon Togolmai were arrested and charged with kidnapping, terrorizing, aggravated assault, and assault. The incident occurred on Thursday night and started at the Timuning Gym where the victim was playing basketball. Court documents state the boy knew the suspects who forced him into their car before proceeding to Inigua and attempting to attack him with a pipe and then a screwdriver. The victim was punched in the face but managed to escape after giving the names and addresses of the suspects. Police were able to effectuate the arrest. They were also able to confiscate the items the victim described as weapons. Well, a 20-year-old man is behind bars believed to be involved in a riot. Cleo Cruz was charged and arrested with rioting, criminal mischief, and disorderly conduct. Court documents state that up to eight men were seen wielding bats, pipes, and batons in front of a home and also causing damage to one of the cars. Court documents also noting a stabbing had occurred. A witness was able to provide police with descriptions of the suspect cars. Cruz was linked to one of those cars when interviewed by police. He refused to talk. He was apparently drunk when he allegedly raped a toddler girl. Atrico Herwinanen was arrested and charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct, resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and public drunkenness. When police arrived to the scene, they observed the victim wearing only a T-shirt. They could also see she was bleeding from her genital area. Another child in the home reported seeing Herwinanen in the room that night standing over the bed where the victim was sleeping with the blanket wrapped around his waist. Police located Herwinanen in the jungle area nearby where he gave chase and refused arrest, stating, quote, no, I'm not going back to jail, end quote. The toddler was taken to the hospital and Healing Hearts believed to have been a victim of rape. A 27-year-old man is behind bars accused of making unwanted passes. Ryan Joshua Cruz faces charges of assault with intent to commit criminal sexual conduct and fourth-degree criminal sexual conduct. The victim reported he had been picking mangoes when he was approached by Cruz, who asked if he wanted to make cash bush cutting. Cruz then allegedly pulled the victim close to him and put his hands down the victim's pants, grabbing his private parts. Court documents state Cruz then allegedly offered him money to perform sexual acts. The victim remembered the suspect car had passed URMC's parking area. After telling his mother about the incident, they found the suspect vehicle in the hospital parking lot. When interviewed by police, he admitted to being on the scene but denied the allegations. A search is underway for a 14-year-old Department of Youth Affairs male client who managed to escape from DYA's cottage home in Mingilao. The teenager was discovered missing just after 9 p.m. Thursday after he went to use the restroom. A search continues for the teen boy who is described as 4'11", weighing 78 pounds, chookies with black eyes and black hair, and a scar on his left arm. He is a status offender, which means he is charged with an offense that is not criminal if committed by an adult, such as truancy or beyond control. If you have any information, you're urged to call Guam Crime Stoppers at 477-HELP. This is the third escape from the Manila facility this week. On Tuesday, two DYA clients were able to get out. Both were caught the following day. Well, the music continues tonight. More choirs will take the stage in day two of the Tumon Bay Music Festival, the largest music event in the region. The 10-day event features choirs, bands, and orchestras from Guam, the CNMI, and Japan. Tonight's show starts now and at, at the Guam Plaza. For more information, you can always visit the website at tbmfguam.com. Org. Time to get your groove on, Chris. Time to get my groove. <laughs> Sports is next, but first, here's your island weather.
clean up how life can be when you're young, wild and free. That's why GTA hooks it up with the best phones at the best prices to keep you living life to the fullest. Get the Motorola Moto G4 for free and Alcatel A3 XL for only $49 or the Samsung Galaxy A8 for only $99 with a $50 per month unlimited talk and text plan including 5 gigs of high-speed data. Visit gta.net or a store for details. Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. And during Ram Truck Month, save up to $97.50 on new Ram trucks. Cars Plus has a great selection of 2018 Ram trucks. Plus, shop our remaining 2017 Ram 1500s. Voted Guam's best truck two years in a row. The Ram truck comes with a five-year, 60,000-mile powertrain warranty. And with 1.99 APR financing for qualified buyers, there's no better time to buy than now. It's Ram Truck Month, and only Cars Plus and Mighty has the trucks. Cars Plus, driven by you. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. You know how we do it every Friday. We start things off with your Da Rento own Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here, Darren's home, Daddy Doe, for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have basketball player Ray Sablon. Congratulations on being Darren's own Athlete of the Week. Who would you like to present your check to? Uh, I'd like to donate the check to uh, the Guam Basketball Elite Center. All right, Ray, first off, meeting Bone Collector while he was on island and then playing alongside of him. Uh, how was that experience for you? Uh, it, was, it was great. It was fun because... Um, I would I would always like watch him on YouTube and be amazed by the the things he does and to finally meet him and play uh, alongside him it was a great experience for me. Not only were you able to play alongside of him, but you were on the same team, dish you the ball, hit the game winning shot at the buzzer to help your team uh, win that All Star game. Uh yeah, um, we would have tried to win for the win earlier, but um, the bone collector. Uh, said uh let's give something for the kids to talk about so in that last huddle that's that's what we went for and him and mark and aiken um i guess looked at me to shoot the game winning shot so i did right now you play for uh the jfk alumni team for uh the guam elite alumni league uh you're looking to play with uh team og for the upcoming golden hoops uh yeah team og i'm uh, i'm excited to uh to uh, get in a run with them because uh, they're a pretty good team and um, you know new faces there's a lot of talent and um, just looking forward to uh, playing with them and also in the next month or two looking to defend that uh, Pacific Islands Basketball League uh, championship as well um, well we can uh, we just have to like be ready and um, stay humble be humble about everything and uh, you know um, just let everything uh, take its place and I guess have fun. All right. Congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dar Red Zone Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're going to end the show with a video montage from Battle Showcase Guam.
that's around me. It teaches me that there are no shortcuts in life and that the long way home may just be the scenic route. And that even the dirt roads can lead to beautiful destinations. of the week to announce the winner of our yummy cold stone creamy birthday cake and this week's winner is all right baba rosario's birthday was on february 27th a rep from cold stone creamery will contact you and let you know how you can redeem your yummy cold stone ice cream cake yeah and share it with us well sure. that's gonna do it for us here on the news desk have a great weekend everyone good night see you tomorrow closed captioning is brought to you by i be a role model. Okay, so so how do you do that? Because a lot of people say like, you know, service learning and community service and as Guamanians we, you know, we always give back and we take care of our neighbors and our family and everything. Uh, what